So I don't understand what exactly um, what I got hit by. Maybe it's that video of the Indian thingy. I don't know. Uh, let me just double check. I am I am live, so uh, I don't know exactly what happened there. Yeah. I better be careful about that video then. It's probably one of those videos. I need to figure out which one though. Uh, yeah. All right, that's a bit weird. Yeah, no, I don't think it was hacked. I think maybe I got a copyright strike or something, or policy, or maybe it was uh, skitsy witsy getting, uh, let's just say, a little bit triggered. And actually, if it was him, I'm actually going to take that as a, um, a a good sign. I'm not going to lie. All right, so let me uh, let me do the thing here again. The title. I need to go back and then retitle the bloody thing. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, uh, let me just get everybody to come over to here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've checked my warning. Um, there's no warning on this. So I don't know what it was. It might be. It could have been the Fungada. Maybe I've not played it. But I played it yesterday, so I'm not sure. Maybe because I've looped it. And it's kind of triggered it. I don't know. It could actually be Skits and one of those guys. So uh, let me just uh, double check my account because if I had a uh, proper strike on my channel, I would have got a. Um, I wouldn't be able to live stream. I can tell you that now. And I'm still. I'm checking my thingy. It's just a warning. Um, I haven't really got anything, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. Let me just. Um, I think they've shut that stream down, I hope. Have they shut it? I don't know exactly what I'm doing, to be honest with you. Let me just double check something. Um, all right, so. I don't know if I'm streaming on two channels now. I think I might be, actually. I might be streaming on two channels. Oh, I am st still streaming on that other one. How do, how do I turn that other one off? Um, all right. Actually, do you know what? I might have to uh, put this on private just to get it thingy, public, private, done. Just thingy. Hey, it, could, it could have been, uh, I think it might have actually, actually been the Fungada stuff, which is a bit of a shame because I love that little Fungada section, man. I'm not going to lie. Um, let me just look in the back chat if anyone's claiming. Uh, all right. So now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I'll do is if if this particular stream does go down, I'll just do it in Rod Speaker's Corner uh, uh, live stream anyway. Now, I'm going to be honest to you. I, I, I actually am hoping Skit striked it. Do you know why I want Skit to strike it? Because then I know there's some legitimacy to the information I'm providing. Now, I will say something. We'll go on just in case. I've said what I wanted to say about Skits anyway, which is fine. I've said it. Everything now is going to be, be done legally and above board. Um, I'm going to, like I said, everything will be done legally and above board. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? I don't, I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, you can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. So everything will be done legally and above board. There's not going to be no um, silliness. Like I said, I... Um, I don't believe in kind of thing. I think work, you know, you've got to work with the police and all that kind of stuff. He's done enough, uh, in my opinion, against enough people to, he's not going to go, it's not going to be the biggest crime of the century. I just think that he needs to be exposed uh, for what, uh, uh, yeah, Tank Bhangra broke YouTube. 
tank Bhangra is that powerful. Ding, 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 ding. What I might have to do, yeah, I might have to buy a little mini tank and uh, put a little soldier on top, a Sikh soldier, and then what I'll have to do is I'll have to just dance uh, with the tank Bhangra. I'm going to have to get, now I'm going to have to buy a tank. Uh, I don't know whether I should actually. Uh... Yeah, it could be the title of the stream, actually. So it could be title of the But that's cool for me. Let me say something here. Yeah? I'm hoping they give me a reason. And if it's something to do with skits, then I know for a fact there's an element of truth. There's an element of truth. Yeah. If he was, uh, if he's the one who struck it, saying that uh, I'm true. Because I did say speaker's corner skits revealed and i was playing those videos so it could have been one of those videos until i know for definite i can't really do much but i can i'm going to try doing it and let me say that if i do get a strike i'll just i'll just live stream on my other channel on um speaker's corner lives uh was it speaker's corner live stream i will say something oh let me just quit oh my god man this drawing now this, all right, so my drawing behind me, I'm going to have to get back to doing it because I'm not lying. It's been the freaking hardest drawing I've ever done because I've made so many mistakes. Um, as you can see here, it's not done. It's still rough. It's just taken with a with a camera, so you can't actually see anything properly. But a bloody drawing has been a nightmare. Um, I'm starting to get the background in. It's got to be refined now. But I actually, this middle bit here, uh, had water all over it, and so I had to... Um, this this whole section here had to be replaced yeah this whole section in the middle is a new piece of paper i've had to add it on and then thingy it so now i can now i've got that repaired and it's taking a long time i can now start concentrating on putting the background in so you can see here you have the um you have the and it's actually quite a good time actually um because um you've got a lot of censorship on facebook as you can see here twitter google and i, I don't agree with uh, certain people like um trump or anything but i don't believe people should be censored uh, to that degree like you know uh, they seem to be like what you're doing put the boot of uh boot of censorship on people's heads and stuff like that so uh, i need to get this kind of like sorted out and done so obviously i've gone to a next level in the background where they you know, YouTube police are acting like a goddamn uh, fascist Nazi state. Um, I just need to get this done and dusted so I can actually, actually get this out there at the moment. Um, uh, when I can uh, get in there, though, thank God. One of those drawings that um, almost killed me. I'm not going to lie that. Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, skitsy witsy. Uh, yeah, read the yeah, I got a message saying stream stop from Raj power moves on his shoulders. The Bhangra moves. Yeah, they couldn't take it. It kind of shook the shook YouTube to its core. Uh let me have a look. Uh skits is and obviously you care, you're the first one I usually so yeah, I think of I think my um I think I might have got a strike from Skitsy Witsy. You know he's a little bit uh let's just say a little bit um let's just say i think he seems a little bit scared at the moment where we will be friends someday regina just say skip the skin at the last uh so here's a little message from uh, skitsy witsy um let's have a look what skitsy witsy is saying let's see what skitsy witsy is saying yeah, this is, I call him Skitsy Witsy, like um, Jupiter calls him Skitsy Witsy. You know, Skitsy Witsy is like a good name for him, I think. You know, Skitsy Witsy. Skitsy Witsy. Oh my God, my bloody thingy. Uh, I need to. Skitsy. It, it's got to be him because there's no, no other way it could be anyone else. I'm not going to play those videos because it could have been those videos that got me striked. Uh, so on this one, I'll be careful to I'll find out exactly uh, what was going on. Um, so obviously, uh, let's go back. Uh, back. Oh, my God. 
que é... Ok. Deixa eu ver uma é Skitsi Witsi. Oh, era Skitsi Witsi. Skitsi Witsi. So, Skitsi Witsi. Obviously, we got Google Hangouts in the back. And the Skitsi Witsi is just plastering stuff in the back. Uh, you know. And here's the latest one. Let's have a look what he's saying. Let's have a look what Skitsi Witsi said. Oh, my God. Skitsy Witsy says uh, six months minutes ago, Skits ain't smart, smart fam. I'm just a dumb person. But this pigeon looks worried now. Look, I'm not worried. I'm just bloody well, uh, tired. We will be friends someday, Reginda. Just say Skits is king. That is all I ask. Remove yourself from bad people and become a baptized Sikh. <laughs> if ever, if ever this was some kind of like defeated person Raj, we will become best friends just become a baptized sake remove yourself from bad people um what do you mean by bad people though because like it's hard for me to understand um it's hard for me to understand what you mean by bad people because your definition of bad people it's probably good people to me. So we need to kind of clarify because is a bad person somebody that, um, let's have a look, is a bad person that just earlier today uh, decided to post this or is this a good person? Explain to me, Skitsy Witsy. Is this a good person or a bad person doing this? Uh, an old, female, old woman, obviously my M-U-M, uh, he's got a picture and then he's, uh, didn't blank out the face. He's got a big, you know what, uh, C O C K. I don't want to say it too loud because I know somebody's at next to the door. Uh, probably my brother, I think. Um, and so you can see here, it, this was just posted earlier today. Is this a good person or a bad person, Skitsy Witsy? Uh, can we can can we try and figure out? Because you're saying to me, I need to remove myself from bad people. But is is this your definition of good people or bad people, Skitsy? Which one is it? Because I need to understand, because if this is your definition of good people, then my definition of bad and good is different from yours. Yeah. So the people you told me to remove yourself myself from, I probably need to stick closer to. And the people you want me to go closer to, I need to remove myself from. So we need to kind of uh, define exactly uh, what your thing is now. Obviously, uh, let me just, uh, let me just yeah. God, do you know what? Yeah, let me say something. I better stop this stream here because I've almost done something really stupid. Yeah, somebody is posting the most vulgar stuff in the back chat. Yeah, whoever that person is, yeah, you, you're just you you just lost your mind. So it's, it's that disgusting. Yeah, I can't even say what it is. Yeah. But it's so disgusting. Every time I see, I, I feel I, I get queasy, man. Uh, somebody just posted something in a back chat. Now, Skitsy Witsy, is this your definition of a good person or a bad person? Is this your definition of a good person or a bad person? Because you sent this to me a year and a half ago. So I need to figure out. You need to you need to give me some boundaries of what your um uh what your kind of definition of a good or a bad person is we need to know that yeah yeah look here yeah, i'm going to be honest to you i know what you're saying as uh, as uh, um uh see ya. i get what you're saying but no 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 there's certain people i think people need to understand something yeah let, let me let me explain something i get the most amount of abuse constantly if you go into any video with me on there there's around a thousand comments abusing me uh even if you go on a random video you know that video of uh, the old Sikh man being converted i was getting abused on that by great dunia i can go into any picture i mean on videos here and you know with me on there or just for one second i'm getting abused my family's getting abused i'm getting abused my religion's getting abused but let me say something there's abuse and then there's criminality 
Yeah. And this same person isn't just doing it to me. He's doing it to other people I get on with, like Zabida. He's constantly harassing Zabida in the back chat with nasty, disgusting stuff. He's constantly harassing Jupiter and people like that. So it's not just about me. Yeah, it's, it's about other people. And this certain individuals, I believe, yeah, have to be exposed. Have to be. Yeah. And I don't care if people think I'm petty. I don't really care. I am petty. I'm very petty. Yeah. I'm somebody that will hold a grudge to my dying days. Yeah. When I'm in an old person's home, I'll be like, I'll put Dida to somebody that if I see them, yeah, and I didn't like them before. I'm not gonna leave it alone. That's the thing though. So a lot of people will say, Raj, just don't forget about it. No, 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 no. That's not how I work, yeah. I don't care if I'm feeding him, it doesn't matter. The point is at some point, yeah, at some point, yeah, at some point, the person, it's not about look, 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 look. This is the thing, yeah, Raj, you need to get a thicker skin. Now, look, listen, listen here. For two and a half years, yeah, do you know how much of abuse, threats, and everything I've got? Most of the stuff I find funny. Like, you've done pics of me as a pigeon. I don't get, do I start crying? I've had people call me pigeon for a year and a half. People cuss me out nonstop. It doesn't bother me. But I do have a limit. If you start threatening, doing uh, porn pics, or malicious stuff like blackmailing me and stuff like this, and you're using my MUM in order to do it, then I'm going to be petty. You can attack me as much as you want. It doesn't bother me. I've got a very, very, very thick skin. But once you start going over to this degree of what this person's done and he's continuously doing, remember, even today, he's still doing it. Even today, he's still doing it. So it's not like he stopped doing it. It's not like, oh, he's learned his lesson. He's like, okay, don't worry about it now. Oh, you know, I made a mistake. No, the person is still doing it. Yeah. So I don't care whether people say I'm feeding the person, whether they say that, oh, you're giving him too much energy. No, the guy's going to get my energy. I can tell you that straight now. He will get my energy. Yeah. He will get my energy. And, he's get, and it doesn't matter how long it takes. I'm very, very patient. Yeah, because this was just posted today, all in the back chat. And you expect me to just fit, uh, forget about that? Yeah, you expect me to just forget about that? What do, what do you think I'm going to do? No, 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 I'm not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, maybe you guys are cut from a different cloth. Maybe you don't give a shit if people does do does that kind of stuff about your mother. Maybe that's just you. That's up to you. You know, I, that's I can't do nothing about that. You know. You know, at the end of the day, you know, someone does stuff like this about my mother. I'm gonna take it personally. It's just as simple as that. You can't expect me not to. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't feel um, any kind of like pity for people like this when they go to this level. Yeah. No, 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 no. The the, the thing is, yeah, this is one of the, the things that people need to understand. In when you have online trolls, yeah, a lot of them think they're anonymous. And I'm telling you, there are people out there in real life here who have been attacked by some of these anonymous trolls and have ruined them, yeah, in a one way or another. Some people can be kind of you become kind of suicidal. I'm a very tough person, it doesn't really emotionally bother me, but I am very vindictive. And so if somebody's gone past the line, I'm gonna use I, I, I'm gonna be as vindictive as I need to be as long as we're within the law in order to kind of like expose this person. And I will keep it within the law. Don't worry about that. I will keep it within the law. No doubt about that. Uh, I will actually. Um, so what I need people to do for me here is um, I need to be careful about this bit. But let me just try and get it up. Let me just try and get this picture up. Uh, uh, Just thingy. Just put the picture. Now I think I can get this one up just because I've edited. Now YouTube or YouTube, you goddamn fascist, goddamn uh, thingy. This is edited out. Everything I will do will be within the law. Uh, I have a right. Um, if someone is trying to blackmail me or making um, what I call um, 
uh, kind of malicious communication towards me, I have a right to go within the law and use the police in order to deal with it. Now, like I said, uh, blurred out the faces. Yeah, so if anyone's going to try and strike the stream, if they try and strike it again, uh, I'll go to Rod Speakers Corner live chat. And I just won't show this again. But as you can see, this video was put up. I'm not going to play the video again uh, because I think that, that might have been what got me the hit. Uh, Speakers Corner skits has gone to the lengths of cursing people's mums, insulting certain individual. This guy, this is somebody called uh, this particular channel uploaded. This guy's tried to hide his information. Uh, but this is him in his videos, um, shows two men, one chubby, aka Speaker's Corner skit, so I think he's saying this one is uh, him, uh, and one tall guy, next man, pulls up in a car and skits give the man shit, so then all hell breaks, breaks loose. So after this, a fight breaks out, and obviously, this was three months ago, skits is saying, you know I tried to stop the fight, yet. yeah? Yeah. Um, now, I was sent this video, like I said on my last stream, I was sent this video um, around a year ago or a year and a half ago saying this was this was him. But because of the fact that, you know, I was like, nah, it could be anyone. I, I was actually sent it twice by two separate people, reliable people as well. Like, they, they, they want people that, you know, just random people. And I was like, nah, you got no proof. Um, and I never, I never discussed it. Now, before anyone says, oh, Raj. You showed the video and then Skit saw the video and then Skit said, okay, I'm going to troll Raj. Never showed the video because I didn't believe it was true. Never spoke about the video because I didn't believe it was true. And I didn't have no proof. So this particular comment that he made three months ago, even at the time, I wasn't having problems with Skit. Skit was kind of not even in my radar at the time. I had other things to do. And so for him to then suddenly write... Uh, you know I tried to stop the fight, Eid, yeah? Yeah? And this is another one that people say is him. And it could be the same person. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, but then again, they all look the same, to be honest with you. This is, I can't tell. Uh, I can't really tell uh, who's thinking. So, I mean, easily that guy or that guy or that guy could be them. I mean, that, that could be them. I mean, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah. They all look the same. They all look the same. <laughs> These Pakistanis all look the same. I'm joking. I'm joking because <laughs> that's a joke before anyone says anything because I know I know Sikhs of that turbans look like Pakistanis. I know that I was joking. I'm joking. Um, this is allegedly, yeah, this is another one that's saying it's him uh, over here. This is actually somewhere in uh, a place called Whaley Range in Blackburn. So I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Uh, I would like to know where this place is to find out exactly where that is. Uh, which would be good. Oh, let, oh my God, I've got to play something. Yeah, I totally forgot, yeah? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mad Dunny is there, that goddamn lunatic, yeah? That little uh, goddamn... We will convert everybody, even if they're dying of coronavirus, can't think, and they're in a coma, they must convert. Yeah. My name Grey Dunia, you know. My name Grey Dunia. I'm going to go hospital today. My name Grey Dunia. I'm going to hospital. Let me find somebody that is 99 years old, has 10 seconds to live. I promise you, I'll get Shahada. I promise you, one rupee back or Shahada. Yeah. Now, let me say something here. Yeah. I am shocked here yeah, about something Fogger Faz said yesterday. Yeah. I'm not going to lie here. Yeah. Fogger Faz, yeah, you're the Biggest disgrace to Bengalis I've ever met you, ever. Your disgrace. Your disgrace, Fogger. A disgrace. I couldn't believe what I heard last night, yeah, on Fogger Faz's channel about him cussing his own countrymen. All right, you want to cuss me, yeah? You want to cuss the Sikhs? You want to cuss India? You want to cuss this? Cool, whatever. But when you're dissing your own national war hero who sacrificed his life for your country and you're calling him a traitor, you're a disgrace, dude, man. I swear to God. Let me play a bit of this. I'm going to have to find the audio here because I didn't have time to think about it. Yesterday, you know, I'm not going to lie. I listened back to it last night, yeah, and I was like, I had to rewind it like twice just to double check I'd heard exactly what I'd heard, yeah. Now... What I'm going to... Uh, oh, my God. You know, my freaking... 
Thank you, Kitson. Patrick is on time, I think. So let me explain what happened, yeah? I'm going to open the panel up in a bit. So anyone wants to jump on, um, you can jump on, yeah? So yesterday, uh, obviously, uh, Fogger Faz got triggered by some, uh, you know, me uh, explaining certain things about the Indian Bangladesh war and all that kind of stuff. And he, and, and have a look here to anybody uh, who says that Fogger Faz has respect for Sikhs. Don't ever think he does, yeah? I told him, yeah, how many hours ago? This is 20 hours ago that this picture here is not Bindrawala. It's Guru Teg Bahadur, the Guru, yeah? Yeah? And this is Aurangzeb. And the title is, who's better man, Aurangzeb or Bindrawala? It has nothing to do with Guru Teg Bahadur. I told him he's um, he's a thingy. He's um, uh, the Guru. Hasn't taken it down. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say it straight now. And this is no threat. If that picture is not taken down in 24 hours, I'm going to do a live stream of Prophet Muhammad's picture on there. On my thingy, I'm telling you straight now. I'm not messing about now. You tell that little prick to take down that picture, Guru Teg Bahadur, because it's disrespectful. And he's put it up on a title about Bindarawala. And it's got nothing to do with Guru Teg Bahadur. You want to play like that? I can play like that. Don't think you can start uh, violating me. Yeah, and seeks, and you think I'm not going to do nothing back. I'll take responsibility for it, though. Told that little pussy how to take it down, because I told him that is Guru Teg Bahadur. And he said, whatever, whatever. No, no, you want to play that way? I'll show you how insulting I can go. And then you can blame uh, Fogger Faz for me doing it. Now, let me just tell you about this national war hero from Bangladesh here. Yeah? And what happened yesterday was that, uh, obviously, Fogger Faz was doing this show, yeah? He then... Um, Mr. Amraz, wibbly wobbly, Mr. Amraz, yeah, yeah, jumped on, yeah, and randomly he starts talking about this guy who's a traitor to Pakistan, yeah, and instead of um, uh, Sir Faz going, okay, is he a traitor to Pakistan or was he fighting for Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, um, uh, let's say independence? This guy, yeah, is the only Bengali I've ever heard to call one of their national heroes a traitor. He sided with Amaraz. Amaraz was saying that this guy was a traitor to Pakistan because he was a Bengali and he fought against the Pakistan army, yeah? He's a Bengali fighting for his own freedom. Guess who had to come on and defend it? Gain. Big up to Gain, man, because Gain, as much as I disagree with him, at least he's uh, not a pussy -o, like this freaking uh, Fogger Faz. Fogger Faz, you're a disgrace, man. You're a disgrace. I'm telling you, I've never met Bengali like you. Never. You're on a next level of pussy -oldism. Never. And so the guy he was talking about was this guy. Let me just... Uh... Yeah, the guy was... Let me just uh, list the... Uh... All right, here it is. Yeah, so... Let's get the guy. So here's the guy. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you who he was uh, actually mocking yesterday. Yeah, because this guy gave up his life. He didn't just, he didn't just, um, you know, uh, fight and got admit that he, he died for his country. And Fogger Faz was siding with um, um, uh, Amaraz, calling him a traitor. This guy here, uh, Matur Rahman. Yeah, he was an airport, uh, a, 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 a pilot. Yeah. Uh, for the Pakistani army, which is Pakistan plus Bangladesh. He, his people are being persecuted in Bangladesh. So he gave up his life in order to try and fly back to help his Bangladesh brothers. Now, this freaking idiot, yeah, if you look here, I think he's even got um, uh, like a schools, you know. Oh, yeah, here's a school. Mata Rahman's grave. And also they've got a um, Air Force base named after him in Jazeera. Yeah, the Bangladesh Air Force Base is named after him. Yeah, a Air Force Base is named after this guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a, a a national war hero in Bangladesh. Yeah, now let me let me play a bit of what Fogger Faz said about this war hero from Bangladesh, because um. What's his name? Amraz Kaman. Wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly. Oh, there's a guy called Matar Rahman. 
he's a he's a traitor to Pakistan. Ra ra ra. He's a traitor. He went against Pakistan, and instead of Fogafaz going, no, he was fighting for his country and he died for his country, and he's now a national hero with an Air Force base named after him. Guess what Fogafaz said? He said, any Muslim fighting against another Muslim is a traitor. He should have never, ever sided with India. He chucked his uh, Bengali uh, brother, who was a national hero, under the bus. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Let me find the actual audio so I can actually play it so people think I'm not lying, so people know I'm not lying. Let me just get it. Now, before anyone says I'm the one that kind of instigated this, I didn't, I've never, I don't even know, I don't even know if Mr. What's his name? Um, Amraz even watches my show. But, um, yeah, one minute. No, let, me just, yeah, let me just double check. So basically, um, you have um, this video. Let me just get the video. Actually, before I do that, let me read about this guy first because you know what, man? Like, let me let me read about him first, yeah, so people understand who who he's dissing, so you understand it's not some some random dude. So the person that Amrazi starts dissing, and then Sir Faz starts dissing, yeah, is a guy called Matur Rahman. He's a military pilot. Here's his picture, yeah. Here's Matur Rahman, yeah. He's a national hero now in Bangladesh. Um, Matar Rahman died 20th of August 1971. He was a flight lieutenant of the Pakistan Air Force and recipient of the British Shirtho. I think that's one of the highest thingy. Bangladesh's highest military gallantry awards for his actions during the liberation of Bangladesh. Yeah, he attempted to escape from Pakistan and join the Bangladesh Liberation War by hijacking a Lockheed T-33. Think about it. This guy, yeah was so outraged by what was happening to people, he freaking hijacked the plane, yeah? You gotta give the guy credit. I, would, I, I mean, I hope everyone would do that. Like, if you know your, uh, your uh, people are being um, persecuted and stuff, yeah, go there, go there. Um, uh, so he attempted to escape from Pakistan and join the Bangladesh uh, Liberation War by hijacking a Lockheed T-33 aircraft, which was being flown by a 20-year-old pilot, Rashid Minas, who was conducting his second solo flight. Rahman stopped the aircraft on the runway, got some jet fuel. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, I'm not going to lie. This is pretty beastly. He got some jet fuel. Um, what did he do? He got some jet fuel on some cloth and climbed into the cockpit and steered the aircraft towards the Indian border. He also tried to faint the student with jet fuel, scented cloth, but Rashid Minas fought against him through the mechanically con linked controls. Mati, being a superior, took control and steered the jet towards India. Rashid Minas saw the situation was out of control, and he knew that if Mati was successful, it would be a great loss for Pakistan Air Force. So he took control again and with bleeding nose and declined the jet, resulting in a crash a few kilometers from the Indian Pakistan border, killing him and Rahman, uh, keeping the uh, thingy. Uh, later on, research was conducted and the wreckage was found. Yeah. Uh, Rush, let me have a look. So, so, all right, after 30 years of negotiation, Rahman's body was finally returned to Bangladesh on the 24th of June 2006 for a ceremonial and highly symbolic reburial in 2006. Pakistani Foreign Ministry, to see him described it as a good rule jester. He was buried at the Martyrs uh, Intellectuals Graveyard, Mipur, Dhaka, with full military honors. His original burial in a grave in fourth class employees graveyard in Pakistan and the hanging of his photo at the entrance of Michelle Air Force Air Base, identifying him as a traitor had been a sore point between pa so these guys you had his picture at a Pakistani airbase calling him a traitor when he's fighting for his own country. Uh, obviously, Sir Faz agrees with it. 
the Bangladesh Air Force Base at Jashara is also named after him. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, the Air Force also gives it a trophy named after him for best performance in the flying training. The Shota uh, Matura Raman tri Trophy. So he's got his own tri trophy named after him. Is also awarded for the best research paper of air wing in defense services commanded at staff college dining halls here so this guy is a national hero in uh pakistan in bangladesh yeah in bangladesh now you don't have to agree with everything he did you don't have to um thingy but when you're on a panel here with a guy called amaraz who's dissing this guy and listen to fogafaz's responses Listen to Fogafaz's responses. Um, uh, let me tell you something, Fogafaz. You know when you did this title, even Gain cussed you? He said, what has this got to do with... How can you compare Bandarawala with... Um, uh, yeah. Look at this. I don't think... He shouldn't. He shouldn't. The guy, yeah, freaking what, young guy, 21 years old, yeah, 21 you man what was you doing when you was 21 what was you doing when you was 21 fogger what was you doing and how old was he oh let me just double check his age let me see. i think he's like 20 something as well oh, it's like, uh, august yeah he's like 20 something as well what was you doing he's probably in green street uh looking for some talcum powder yeah, this guy was running up to a, t a Lockheed plane on the middle of a air, air on a runway, jumped into it with a cloth to think about it to uh, try and kind of like suffocate the air pilot and try to fly and they, he died in the process. What was you doing during that time for your country? Probably sitting there going, "Oh, Pakistan, come in, come in, Pakistan, don't worry about killing us. Come on, guys, come on, come in." Now let me play you now i'm gonna i can't show you the thingy because i don't want to get striped and i can't play too much but he's doing the audio yeah he's just talking about me for a minute and listen here look well raj never answers that question he always runs away and neither does piss drop he did he massacred so many so then amraz oh, no. comes on what's happening boys and girls Assalamu alaikum. Was dead. Leave him alone, man. Talk about someone alive. Even listen. Even Amraz cussed him out about his Sat title. Boys and girls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Mr. Amaz. Wa We're not on guys in the stream yard. What do you mean, married to have sex? When do I You and bro, you know we will be shutting that in the market. Hold on. Remember, um. Yeah, they um, they oh, had guns God. and everything, and the, and then they had a big you know fight there. Really. Yeah, um, but the thing, the whole idea. Hang on, let me see who this is. He was uh, unsuccessful. Oh, here it is. Here he is. from Pakistan in yeah. the war of 1971. He's called Rashid Midhas, and a traitor uh, from the Pakistani army, being a Bangladeshi person, tried to hijack the plane and give it to India, and. Uh, he was uh, unsuccessful because a young 21-year-old Rashid Minas crashed a plane, killing himself and not letting the, the secrets go to India. It would have been a strategic, uh, uh, basically, advantage to India. And he okay. basically had you know, done that. So he got the uh, Nishande Hazar, which is like the, the Purple Heart or the Congressional Medal of Honor or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he got the highest accolades. But the Bengali person, who was a traitor, in the Pakistani army, you know, he decided with. Hold on. Once Amran said this Bengali was a traitor to the Pakistan army, what Faz should have said, no, he can't be a traitor because his people were fighting against Pakistan to be liberated. You can't be a traitor if you're fight the, the, the people you're fighting against are oppressing you and you want your own national st national state. Listen to what Fogafaz says. Though. Fogafaz, you're a disgrace. You're done at it, man. You should never go to Bangladesh. I'll tell you straight now. Well, a non-Muslim nation, you know what I mean, against the Muslim nation, got awarded the highest accolade by Bangladesh. 
And the more argument is, do you think that guy should uh, be getting a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a medal from Bangladesh? Because he was not a Bangladeshi, uh, what do you call it, a soldier, he was a Pakistani soldier. No, he wasn't a Pakistani soldier. He was a Bengali who was in Pakistan, probably training. That doesn't make him a Bengali soldier, does it? It doesn't mean it doesn't make him a Pakistani soldier. He's in their training. He hears his country is being attacked. Millions of people are being killed and he decides to try and help his people. That is not a traitor. That is a national hero. Somebody, yeah, if I if my country yeah, is being bombarded and I'm in a different country over in, you know, training somewhere and that country is the country trying to destroy my country and I'm trying to go back to try and help them. I can't really say you're a traitor per se. Because you're trying to help your country be liberated from the oppressive force that is coming. Who defected and was, tra was a traitor and actually committed treason against the oath they taken. So I did he did he did he, did he commit, so did he commit urge, treason? So did he commit treason urge, against Pakistan? Yeah, because he's the Pakistan army. So did you hear that? Did he commit treason against Pakistan? Amra says yes, because he went against the Pakistan army. So by, by Amra's logic, every Bengali that fought against Pakistan's atrocities against Bangladesh is, a, is, is doing treason now. All of them, the, the, all of those soldiers that you know fought for liberation. And listen to Faz. Okay, Amra's here, that's your opinion. But to hear a Bengali, this is the first ever time in my entire life here, I've heard a Bengali, and I've known a lot of Bengalis over my time. I've never heard a Bengali chuck their own people under the bus like this. They will either do two things, no comment, I don't want to talk about it, or they'll go, okay, it was a part of history that, you know, uh, blah, 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 and, you know, we fought and we liberated. But they don't do what Faz done, which is now to chuck his own Bengali uh, people under the bus to appease Amaraz, yeah? It's unbelievable. I swear, man, you're done out here. I have no respect for Faz, man, no respect. At all. Yeah, but so those same urge, army. So I strongly mm -hmm. urge the Bangladeshi community to strip that title of his medal from him because uh, you are basically honoring a person who basically was traitorous and uh, basically is uh, not worthy of that title. That's what okay. I'm saying. So, what do you say about that, fans? Look, you're no, no, you're right. If no, no, if, you're, if, he, if he's done that, then he shouldn't be doing that. Especially if there's two Muslim nations fighting um, for whatever reason, then he shouldn't go and, you know, side with, um, you know, a Hindu Kufar nation. No. All right. So did you hear this year? Faz, you are the biggest degenerate I've ever heard. You just said that if any Muslim fights against another Muslim nation, yeah, for a Kufar nation, you're a traitor. All right, so let me explain something to you. I'm very, 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 very shocked about your logic. At the time, you had West Pakistan, which is now Pakistan, going over to East Pakistan. There was a legitimate leader that got elected to be president, who, because they didn't see him as the, uh, a legitimate president, tried to overthrow Bangladesh. They went in there and tried to crush that country, resulting in two million deaths, half a million uh, women being uh, killed. And before everyone says there were Hindus there and there was a lot of there was Muslims as well, both. You're saying that if somebody then tries to get help from another nation, which is uh, uh, not Muslim, you're a traitor. Not the fact that Pakistan yeah, committed all those atrocities against another Muslim nation, Remember, you're talking about Muslim nations. Why? And Gain jumped on there after. So big up for Gains for actually um, kind of putting him in his place. Because Gain doesn't sugarcoat stuff. As much as yeah, I got my own issues with Gain, but he don't sugarcoat. He's not a pussy. Oh, he'll jump on there and go, okay, what are you talking about, Amrez? And he, he, he said the same things that, look, they were fighting for their own liberation from persecution. But at Sir Faz, man, do you know what I've realized who Sir Faz would have been? Do you know during the time here yeah, of Bangladesh? being uh oppressed he would have been one of those guys on the pakistani side 
when his own people were being killed. That's my opinion from hearing this. He would have been one of those guys that, you know, like in Hitler's Germany, where you had Jews, yeah, that were in concentration camps, and you then you had fellow Jews uh, working with the Nazis, yeah, in order to persecute their own people. So there'll be guards and there'll be stuff like this. This is the type of person Faz is, yeah? It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something that, you know, is disgraceful, man. I'm telling you straight now, man. You're lucky I don't know Bengal, that many Bengalis no more because if, the people that I used to know when I was younger heard this kind of shit, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're kind of volatile people. They would not be happy about this stuff. No, okay. So basically, uh, uh, basically, is uh, not ready of that. Topic. That's what okay. I'm saying. So what do you say about that, fans? Look, you're no, no, you're right. If, no, no, if, you're, if, he, if he's done that, then he shouldn't be doing that. Especially if there's two Muslim nations fighting... Um, for whatever reason, then he shouldn't go and you know side with um, you know a Hindu Kufar nation. No. No. Okay. So basically, do you condemn that person? Do you disagree with your uh, forefathers from giving him? Yep. Uh, the, 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 yeah, you condemn that fully. You are certain, now, are you do, sure? He shouldn't be. Should yeah. be doing that 100. percent But the same way, he can. He just. Did you just hear it? He said he condemned him. This guy here, who's a national hero of Bangladesh, he has air forces uh, named after him, and this guy just said he condemns him. This young guy, 21 years old, gives up his life for his country and his people, and this freaking uh, uh, fog of faz says he condemns him. Go start, try go Bangladesh. Sorry, I actually clicked myself out. <laughs> yeah, I actually clicked myself out. So let's listen to that again, because I don't want him to say I'm misquoting him. I don't want you to say I'm misquoting him here, because you need to ask him about this situation, yeah? You need to ask him, like, you know, what is he talking about? Okay. So what do you say about that, fans? Look, you're no, 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 you're right. If, no, no, if, you're, if, he, if he's done that, then he shouldn't be doing that, especially if there's two Muslim nations fighting um, for whatever reason. Then he shouldn't go and you know side with, um, you know, a Hindu Kufar nation. No. No. Okay. So, basically, do you condemn that person? Do you disagree with mm -hmm. your uh, forefathers from giving him? Yep. Uh, the, 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 yeah. You condemn that fully. You are certain. Now, do you sure? He shouldn't be, should be doing that. One hundred percent. But the same way, the Pakistani army. Do you know, army, the do you know who he is? Do you know his name? Do you know his name? Do you know his name? What's his name? Uh, let me one second. We we'll soon come back. Okay. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Big up to this man. Big up to Matar Raman, man. Big up to him, man. Big up to him. A young man, yeah, stranded in another country. He sees these people being oppressed. He goes onto a runway. Think about it, yeah. What was you doing when you was twenty-one? He, he's in a. He's in. He's in the enemy's uh, compound. Someone is an aircraft on the on the runway. He jumps over to the aircraft, jumps into the cockpit, tries to get the freaking guy out by putting petrol in his mouth. They start flying off, and in midair they're fighting and they freaking they, their plane crashes. Dude, yeah, yeah, Mitar Raman, big up to yourself, man. We salute you, man. We salute you. Big up to you. Yeah, this is disgrace. Uh, look here, this is not. About me trying to shit stir before I say everyone around shit stir. No. Any Bengali, yeah, that sides with Amraz saying that a national hero is um uh is is a um what is it is a traitor and deserves yeah everything, you know, being uh, kind of like you know condemned and stuff, your disgrace. This shows you Fogger Faz. Fogger Faz will sell out anything. Please, Arasid, can I have some more? Do you know what he's going to do? He's probably going to go Bangladesh here. Yeah? And he's like, oh, where's that Air Force base? Where's that Air Force base with that traitor on there? Oh, there it is. He's going to probably go over there and start spray painting the wall. Traitor. Traitor. Yeah. Pulling down the thingy. Take it down. Take it down. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, Pakistani uh, Jack, that enormous fat, also says, look what he done, probably gave him a cupcake or two. 
All right, so um, let me just see if anyone wants to jump on it because I'm going to shut, shut the screen. I'll be honest, I got a bit distracted because of the bloody um, the other stream being cut. Uh, let me just see because I do want to. All right, so let me just quickly go over um, the other part of the stream. I was going to actually might do that tomorrow, actually. Let me just check. Or Friday because it's too much of a big subject. All right, so what I'm going to do here because I've run over here. What I'm going to do in the next two days because there was just so that everybody knows uh, in the UK there's been I'm not going to lie you the best comedy is in the UK. I'm sorry Americans, your comedy shit. Apart from Curb Your Enthusiasm, one of the tops, one of my favourite Seinfeld, one of my favourite, and there's one or two others that I think are pretty good. But overall. American comedy is shite. Now, the reason why it's shit is because most of the time, apart from Seinfeld and uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm and a few other programs, most of these sitcoms especially have a very kind of a PC culture about them. They're not that, um, um, they're not that let's say, um, controversial. Yeah, I mean, Dave Chappelle, yeah, Dave Chappelle, one of the greats as well. I'm talking about I'm talking about more sitcoms. Let me, let me explain something. When it comes to stand-up comedians, Americans have it hand downs, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm talking about sitcoms. Let's go back to sitcoms or kind of like stuff like this. Yeah, and um, so in the UK and kind of like comedy sketches and stuff like that, they're good at comedy sketches. Uh, British comedy isn't too complicated. British comedy is dark. It's dark. I'm going to tell you how dark it can go. If you watch League of Gentlemen, if you watch Red Dwarf, if you watch Peep Show, if you watch The Office, all of these shows here are very dark, yeah, in terms of like, you know, uh, there's no redeeming kind of like, so a lot of the comedy characters that we have are like pricks, proper pricks. There's no redeeming features about them, really. They're horrible people, and we like that kind of stuff. And they're always, they're always, um, losing we don't like happy endings like we don't mind the main character uh being always losing and stuff like that yeah and we kind of like that we kind of we don't really mind that now there was a comedy yeah and it's called bo selector yeah now bo selector was one of my favorite comedy skit shows um when uh, when younger and even now i still love bo selector i still love bo selector i've, I've still i still watch it here and there and uh so there was loads of characters on both selector, yeah. Uh, that were just—I don't want to play anything to get my thing straight. I have to be careful today, to be honest. The reason I'm being very careful is just because of the fact that um, I want to know what's happening with my other stream. Uh, so I'll have to do another stream another day. So this was both selector, yeah. And there was a guy called Lee Francis, and he would play all these different characters, yeah. Now some of the characters were were black, yeah. So. In order to portray a black person, like what do you have to do? What do you have to do? Now here's here is um what's her name? Um got her name, man. Here's um uh, Kelly Osborne. Look at this Kelly Osborne's face, yeah. Look, yeah. How is he gonna how is he gonna portray Kelly Osborne without making white face? Here's Ozzy Osborne. Yeah, look at the state of him. Ozzy Osbourne, look, it was a very freakish kind of thingy. Here's the Osbournes, because at this time, this was in 2000, so this is when the Osbournes were really, really big, yeah? And so he had other characters that, you know, you might not know, but you have Craig David, yeah? One of my favourites, yeah, Craig David. So is this racist to do this? Is it racist to put this mask on? Is it racist to do this? This is supposed to be, um, I think this could be uh, Oprah. I can't remember if it's Oprah, yeah. Uh, this is how he did um, Mel B from um, Spice Girls, yeah. This is how he did, um, so here it is, yeah. Here's the characters he did. Michael Jackson, uh, Craig David, Mel B, and I think there's Oprah up there or something like that, yeah. Now... He's now made an apology saying he's sorry for these particular characters because they're racist. These characters, they're racist. Now, what this is going to send you is a really, 
big kind of like a, a bad precedent in the sense that how are you going to be able to do this character here called Craig David, yeah, and then you can't make him the colour of the skin he is. So he's a mixed race guy. So in order to uh, create that character, you've got to make him mixed race. You can't make him white. This is Mel B. Is this racist? This is the real Craig David. Yeah? Like, like, it's just unbelievable, man. They've lost, yes, they've lost their minds. Yeah, yeah, he did destroy the career of Craig. I, I understand. He did. He destroyed the careers of Craig D David, yes. But it wasn't because of racism. It was because he took the piss out of them. It was nothing. I've watched those shows here for a long time, and there was nothing racist about them. Now, because all of a sudden, yeah, uh, it's now racist. No one was complaining about this five years ago, two years ago. All of a sudden, now Lee Francis, yeah, I, I, I can't stand Lee Francis, yeah, since, he, since the last five years or so. I used to like Lee Francis. I actually used to think, a proper bow, bow selector. I used to like love Lee Francis, but he's gone down the tube, yeah. Now, what's going to happen with Lee Francis, yeah? He's doing what's called um, virtual signaling. Oh, I'm sorry to everybody for being a racist, for being a particular character, and that character is a black person, so I had to put a, a skin color that was darker than a normal uh, color, yeah? If It doesn't make sense, yeah? If he was portraying that person yeah in a racist way what you would have been doing was to make the whole race uh, seem like they were like this person no what he was doing was mocking individual people who had these weird kind of traits you know there were celebrities in the uk and he did white people and he did white people equally as bad no, everybody got it so you know I, I i'm actually shocked this is probably the one thing that really surprised me I mean, here is, um, what's his name? Um, Mick Hucknall, a ginger guy, yeah? Is this now going to be in like 10 years' time? Because he's ginger, he put a ginger woolly hat on, ginger hat on him. He's, this is now going to be against gingers. Here's, um, what's her name? Uh, I've forgotten her name, man. I've forgotten her bloody name now. Uh, I'm going to look at another. Here's David Blaine. David Blaine, yeah? Here's David Blaine, the character. Here is, um, what's his name? Um, oh, the Michael Jackson used to be killer, though. This, this one was my favorite one. I'm not like, yeah. Now, the only one that I think is, is like, the only one I could think here yeah, that might be a little bit kind of inappropriate might be the Michael Jackson one. Other than that, there's not a single one that I can think of that would say, even this one I don't find offensive. But if someone said to me, okay, Michael Jackson didn't look like that, he was making him as a stereotypical kind of kind of like, oh, what, what do you used to do? So you used to do like uh uh <laughs> whatever he used to do and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh and so um yeah, I mean, even this I don't classify as racist in any way. Here's Craig David with uh Lee Francis as Craig David, yeah. Now this idiot, yeah, is now uh, saying, oh, I'm so sorry for doing this. It was so racist. I mean, is this now going to be against beers? Is that going to be against beers now? Like this little bit, like in 10 years' time. Oh, you shouldn't have dressed as a beer because now I, I better be very careful what I show there. Let me explain what would happen with this beer. Yeah? So people, like, if you're if you're from America, you might not understand what this beer is, yeah? Well, let me explain what you what would used to happen. So here would be this beer, yeah. Um, and uh, what would happen is that the people, some a famous person would be invited on the show. They would think it's a kid's kind of show, yeah. They don't realize he was trolling them. And what would happen is that he starts telling a story and the story starts getting um, quite racy. Let's just say like very kind of um, uh, kind of saucy. And then his lullah pops up, yeah. So the beer suddenly has a lullah, suddenly pops up here yeah here yeah and he gets bigger and bigger yeah and then the person he's interviewing starts um 
uh, kind of freaking out. Like, oh! <laughs> and so it was one of those kind of like real risque kind of things here. Yeah. Like, but this is the kind of humor that I think people in the UK enjoy and stuff like that, man. Um, yeah, Ali G as well. What are you going to do with Ali G now? Ali G like freaking killed it, man. Like, what are you going to do with Ali G now? You're going to get rid of Ali G. The other one is Little Britain. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a massive fan of Little Britain, though. So I'm not that pissed off. But let me see what Little Britain characters they did here. Because I don't even remember any characters. Uh, now, okay. So is this what they're complaining about? Is this what they're complaining about? Don't tell me this is what they're complaining about. Is this what they're complaining about? So you got two grotesque ladies. One is a white lady. Look how nasty she looks here. And the other one is portraying a black lady. And she's just as nasty as the white lady. This is not a racist skit. This is uh, two people. One is pretending to be black, a black uh, fat lady. That one's play, uh, pretending to be a, a big fat white lady. Yeah. Both of them just as grotesque as each other. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of um, uh, uh, Little Britain, if I'm being honest to you. So what? What? So you can't even um, pretend, like, dress up here in a particular way. And now this is racist. I, I, I'll have to do another show on this because I don't. The thing is, I don't actually want to carry the stream on uh, just because I want to make sure I know exactly what happened with the, the, the other stream. Uh just to find out what's, what's going on. Am I still online? Yeah, I am. Um, so what I'll do is probably maybe Friday instead, I'll do a show on this properly because I couldn't actually do the show. Uh, and I'll open a panel up and stuff like this and I want to talk about this properly. Let me get some videos. Uh, let me get some stuff. Because I, I don't see this as racist. Yeah. I don't see this as racist. There are There are racist comedies from the UK. Trust me. In the past, some of the comedies here in the 70s and 80s were full on racist. There's no way you can play them today because they are directly racist. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to think of the names of them. There's, um, what was the word? I mean, Alf Garnet was racist, but they were saying they were parodying a racist person. So that's a little bit complicated. But there were some other ones, like something about Love Thy Neighbor. Yeah, this is racist. So let me, let me, let me show you a, let me show you an actual uh, racist thingy. Uh, UK comedy that was actually racist. Oh my god, you know my computer is freaking messed up, man. I think Indian government's trying to wreck it. Every time I talk about uh, Khalistan or anything. Now, this was racist, yeah? This one here, yeah? This is what you call a, a racist um, comedy show. This one. Yeah. The reason being, you had this overtly racist white guy uh, attacking the neighbors, and they made it seem normal, like it was a normal thing to call someone racist words. Uh, obviously, I mean, they made, they made the black guy that he could, he was, he was like defending himself, but it made being racist. Um, Kind of legitimate like it was okay to be racist yeah uh although they were trying i mean were, i think in their warped minds they were probably trying to um oh look, they were probably trying to kind of highlight racism but in doing so they were being fully racist now alf garnet was a little bit more uh let's just say he was a little bit more um oh mind your language uh what's this one am um, uh I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and figure out yeah whether I can play these videos. But listen to this um, raindrop. Listen to this yeah. Now there was a program called Mind Your Language yeah, and um, let me try and get a good picture of Mind Your Language. And it was a massive comedy thing. It was about immigrants coming to UK, and you had this teacher. Uh, you had this teacher in the middle, here who was teaching a class of immigrants. So you had people from Italy, you had people from France, China, Japan, India. And there was a Sikh and Pakistani guy, yeah? A Sikh and Pakistani guy. And their arguments, yeah, were proper brutal because they hated each other, yeah? In that, <laughs> I'm going to try and figure out if I can uh, find um, 
an actual uh, audio mind your language seek versus so i used to i remember used to watch it these two used to always fight the seek versus the thingy so here's the uh seek guy obviously he's not really seek i think he was a hindu or something and here's the pakistani guy they always used to fight these two ranjit versus ali yeah and uh, this, I still find this one funny, mind your language. I don't think it was that bad, actually, racially, because they had a pop at everybody. They had a, they had a pop at everybody, so that wasn't too bad. Now, what I'm going to quickly pray, um, Raindrop, are you still there? Raindrop, do you think I can play that video on the, on the ending note from yesterday? Uh, also, am I going to get a strike? Now, let me say something. You've got Raj only interested in Bengali Patwa to serve his division agenda, but notice he won't speak about Winston Churchill genocide of four million humans. I do. It's a disgrace. And it is something that you know everybody knows about or most people know about, and I condemn him for that. But the Pakistan versus Bengali war is a separate issue. Let me say something. If you're saying I'm causing division, I'm not causing division. I didn't, I didn't, uh, my people didn't order uh, troops to go into Bangladesh and kill 2 million people. That happened. That's history. If you don't like it because you're a little bit uncomfortable about talking about it, that's not my problem. That's not my problem. I've only found out recently that the Punjab regiment was actually the one that has flown out because I never, I'll be honest with you, I never actually knew it was the Punjab regiment. I thought it was the Indian. I mean, I was told that Punjabis went there. I thought well, maybe, you know, I remember Bup saying that. But I didn't really understand the significance of the Punjabis going over there. And I didn't really understand how brutal the civil war, the, the war was. I didn't really understand. I knew a lot of people died, but I didn't really understand the extent. I watched a documentary and now I understand how savage that war was. That's That war is one of the biggest genocides in the modern history but no one knows about it do you know why do you know why because you have people like Fogger fast oh he's a traitor he's a traitor he tried to defend his country but he went against my muslim brothers two muslim fighting no doesn't matter if one of those muslims is killing the other one on them on mass if that one then turns to a, a, a non-muslim kufar he's a traitor He's a traitor. Uh, yesterday, uh, Raindrop sent me a video because uh, you know my stream's going mad. I'm not gonna lie, man. Uh, let me try and get that video up quickly because I'm gonna end it on a funny note because this is a this is quite a funny video. I don't know if I'm gonna get. I'll probably get a freaking strike on this one as well. But I have to play it, man. I have to play it. Sorry, but because. Oh yeah, the other day I'm gonna do a discussion about this as well, yeah, because before I before I do what I'm gonna do, because uh, I had a little bit of a disagreement with blah blah, blah blah. Don't worry, man, we're cool. So um, it's about I, I need to find out. Can people start finding out the Sikhs? What is the um, ruling on tattoos? in Sikhi. That's something I need to find out, yeah, because I've never really got a tattoo. I've always wanted to get a little tattoo on my arm or something of this design, but I never did it because I was like, all right, so if i got a tattoo of a Kundan, then I'm going into places. I can't take it off. I can't do this, and it's kind of disrespectful. I don't know. So um, this is one of my design that was actually done on um, this guy's back. So that must have hurt as hell. So this is the original design here. And I got sent this a while ago, and I only found the picture again. And that was actually um, on a guy's back. Uh, obviously, it looks pretty badass. But, you know, me and Blah Blah fell out a little bit. He was saying, this is against the key. And obviously, I then uh, lost my temper. I said, oh, Padida, shut your mouth. And then and now, we're, now we're cool now. So don't worry. He's probably got a legitimate point. Because I've always had a bit of a problem with tattoos, actually. I'm not going to lie. I've seen some people, um, Sikhs, have tattoos and it's got like religious scripture on there and then they're sitting in a pub knocking back drinks. And I'm like, dude, like, come on. Like, you know, it, it's kind of like you're kind of like disrespecting the thing. Now, uh, I, I, I do actually want to know uh, 
I do actually want to know whether it's against Sikhism. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is what I need to find out. I need to find out. I need to find out. I I've not heard of any rulings, but I do think having... So if somebody, if a Sikh has, you know, a religious scriptures on his body and then he's in a pub drinking, yeah, I think that's out of order. I don't think you should be doing that. Yeah, I don't think that you should be doing that. Personally, myself, I don't think you should be doing that. I think it's disgraceful. I've seen it before and I'm like, dude, like, I didn't say nothing. I was like, but in my head, I was thinking, oh, what is this about, man? Uh, all right, so I'm going to play a video, yeah? And this is... This isn't the Ranjit versus a thingy video, but I'll, I'll try and find some, yeah, of a thingy that I can play. But this is a video. All right. I don't know how whether I can actually play this, but let me just say something. Um, you can't understand what's going on, but I can. And I can't. Look, if you can't understand it, I'm not I'm not going to be thinking. All I will say here yeah, is that the, the seat guy is a Hindu. Now, now, let me explain something. I don't agree with the seat guy going... Hindu stands in the and all this kind of bullshit, yeah, because I don't like that. Yeah. The other guy is a Pakistani guy, yeah. And they arguing um obviously about Pakistan and India, yeah. And you should watch the I don't know whether to play the audio because no one's gonna understand anyway. Uh I don't want to get a strike, man. Let me play a little bit. Let me play, let me just play a little bit. So this is live on air, yeah. This is a live one of the biggest Indian programs uh in India. Two of the guys uh, over here, I think this guy here and that guy here are Pakistani, I think. And the, obviously these ones are Sikh. And this guy here starts going crazy. Watch. All right, so he's he's, uh, Toki, uh, he, like he's gonna hit it on him, yeah, with the thingy, yeah. So uh, I'm not gonna translate because some of the stuff is a bit too much, but I might do it in raindrops on there and go over the video because this is this is funny, yeah. Uh, and then what happens is they start arguing. What's it? Uh, and then this one comes up, yeah, with the <laughs> missile from Pakistan. Look. Yeah. So he's got a missile and he's poking that missile. Look. Look. This one looks like a dildo though. Vibrator. Now remember, yeah, just so people understand, this is like Paxman. You know, like a news night, yeah, where you have lots of different people and it's one of the biggest... Um, like Indian programs, like the, the, the host is like Paxman, and what's what they start doing to each other? Yeah, it's crazy. Both of them are lunatics. Yeah, uh, you don't really need to understand what they're saying, but it's just basically saying they're going to destroy each other. This one's got a missile in his hand that looks like a dildo, and this one's got a oh he did say something killer though i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie here to my Sikh brother uh the pakistani got you hard on that one i'm not gonna i have to i have to admit when when the because he said that you're disgracing san janal singh Pindarawala. yeah and i that hurt yeah i'm not gonna lie i have to agree with the pakistan on that i was like nah that was brutal and then he also says Khalistan's in the bar. And like for me, I was like in, I was like so conflicted because obviously this is not a sketch. This is on like news night. This is like news night. This is a proper uh, panel. So for me, yeah, when he said um uh Sanjan now sing Pindarawala will be ashamed here, ah oh, freaking that hurt, man. Because I knew it's true. I knew it's true. Like sometimes the truth hurts. And then he started going, Khalistan's, I was like, oh no, the Pakistan is doing that. And this Sikh guy, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like the fact he kept saying Hindu stands in the it pissed me off, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, so I was conflicted, but this is brutal. This one. I'm not gonna lie, this is real brutal. Remember, this is like Paxman. This ain't some uh this ain't no thingy. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he I'm not gonna lie on this one, Raindrop. He brutalized him because he said uh sharam niha yeah meaning that he's got no sharam yeah like you know india has done this to the sikh people and you're going hindustan's in the but and i agree with that like 
Just keep, just you shouldn't say it, but it's still funny though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a, it looks like he's like a dodo or something. Look. <laughs> he was saying golly mar, yeah. Golly man, we shoot. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> it seems like madness on one of the biggest Indian shows. <laughs> Oh. oh no, when he said Khalistan Zindabad, yeah, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, because oh, no. like obviously I'm against Pakistan, yeah, but I'm not from India either, so I was conflicted with this because. The Sikh guy is pro India. He's saying Hindustan is in the bar. And I don't like that shit, yeah. And the guy does have a point from the Pakistan side. It's not a skit. It's on this is the biggest news show in India. It's like BBC News Night. You have all these guests on there, and there's a guy that's like Paxman and he lets people on the panel. This is mainstream um uh, uh Indian news, yeah. And so you can see, like, yeah, I have to admit, I'm very conflicted with this one. Very conflicted. <laughs> Look at these two. This one's got a, a bloody metal arrow. This one's got a rocket, yeah? And they're both, like, acting like cool school kids. Look. They call him a bagarat. And this guy here yeah, is like a very serious in the middle, yeah. He's a he's a very serious. The guy in the middle is like the Paxman of, of India, yeah. And look at what's happening beside him. Look. <laughs> Oh, it's brutal, man. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm going to say something, man. Like, I'm not saying it because I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. But I am disappointed in that one. I'm not going to lie. I'm disappointed in that one because... Uh, yeah, obviously I'm pro. I'm a Punjabi separatist, so I don't like the fact that that bloody seat guy, the Singh, uh, he did he did a few mistakes here. First of all, he's saying Hindustan Zindabad. Yeah, no, I don't care. No seat should be saying Hindustan Zindabad. Yeah, you could say if you want to say India, fair enough, cool, but don't call it Hindustan because they're not Hindus. Secondly, uh, the Pakistani guy had some legitimate points. He says Sharamni Hagi, yeah, which means that you have got a shame, yeah. Uh, that you know, sometimes they have Pindarawala, Ibrahim he said Khalistan Zindabad. Yeah, that was brutal. I'm not gonna lie. That was like a oh <laughs> I was like, dude, 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 you hit him hard, man. Uh, and the other thing is the Sikh guy started bringing in Guru Gobin Singhji and stuff like this into this silly stuff here, bringing Sikhi into it. So it was a bit silly, yeah. But I have to say it was hilarious. Uh, if you understood what they were saying, it's even funny. I'll do a translation of it next time. Because uh, they're basically like threatening each other. Oh, we're gonna mara goli in you. He's gonna talk you, talk you. Just means that like he's gonna poke him with the stick. <laughs> God. Uh, Raja, you gonna back Tommy? Did no, no. Well, I'm gonna look. Yeah, I'm neutral. Let me explain something on my stance at the moment. Yeah, and this is uh, my. I'm neutral. I'm not part of Tommy's movement no more. I'm by myself. I don't agree with this. Um, people writing. I don't agree with people even taking down statues, but I also don't agree with um, 
you know, going down there to try and stop them. Like, I'm not getting involved in any of this bullshit. I'm staying in the middle and I'm not siding with no sides. But I will say something and we'll have a discussion about this also on Friday, hopefully, because I was going to talk about it. Is that statues? What do you do with statues? Because the thing is, there's millions of statues around the world. And a lot of them are of people, yeah, who have a very dodgy past. Yeah. A perfect example is someone like um, in uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi statues everywhere. But if you know Mahatma Gandhi's life, although he did something great, a massive accomplishment, which was to uh, liberate India from the Brits, and it was because of him, but, yeah, but that doesn't stop the fact that he was a pedo and a racist at the same time. Also with Churchill, Churchill done an amazing thing. He liberated uh, um, Europe and he defeated the Nazis, yeah? I, I don't care what anyone says. If Nazis won, yeah, we would be in a, in a freaking world of shit at the moment, yeah? You might think it's bad now, but trust me, if, if, if Hitler had won and Churchill had not stood up to him, we would be in a world of shit. India would be under the boot of the Nazis, I'm telling you straight now, and we would be in a much worse position. So although Winston Churchill done one of the, you know, without him, the UK would have crumbled. And on top of that, the West would have crumbled America would have crumbled at some point, Russia would have crumbled, and you would have had um, a, um, a Nazi fascist world order. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Winston Churchill done a lot of bad stuff as well. You know, the, the famine in India was directly caused because of his uh, uh, mismanagement, or even worse, he could have deliberately done it. We don't know. And there's other stuff he's done that, you know, I would consider to be wrong. And, and he had views that were definitely racist. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but what do you do with the statues? Do you take all the statues down then? Because they're statues I hate. I mean, when I see a statue of like Indira Gandhi, I want to freaking rip it down, but I can't. I can't. I can't rip down statues because if I rip one down, the next person is going to say, I don't like that person. Let's rip that one down. That person is going to say, I don't like that person. Let's rip that one down. Yeah. What needs to happen is this. Statues should be left up. What should happen is the plaque that you have there needs to have a, a more balanced description of the person. So, for example, the guy that was over in Bristol, who was actually um, a slave owner, this guy is, should have on his plaque that he did X, Y, Z, and then also he did X, Y, Z. He was a slave owner, and this is part of him. Yeah, that way you're educating people about this guy. You don't venerate the man in that sense. Uh, you just educate people about what people were like at that time. Yeah, because a lot of people in the past, we're putting our own kind of morality onto people that at that time, uh, their moral compass was totally different. Yeah, it doesn't mean what they did was right. It was still wrong. So for me, I'm very conflicted about these statues and stuff. I'm talking about the UK. Let me just let me just preface this. I'm talking about the UK here. Uh, America is a little bit more complicated just because some of the statues they have there, I could imagine as a black person from who was taken from Africa, shipped over, millions of my people were murdered and uh, on the process. And also on top of that, you know, your your people were persecuted for hundreds of years. I think my freaking stream's gone. I'm gonna have to shut it off now because my stream's gone. My Indian government's after me. Indian government's after me. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to shut all this down. Uh, if it stops, I'm just going to end the stream because my computer's like gone mad, if I'm being honest with you. It's like malfunction. So if you can hear me, uh, on my side, the things have gone blank. So I need to um, either shut some windows down. Let me shut some windows down. Uh, sorry about not opening the panel. It's uh, I was supposed to do a proper show today, but I need to find out what. Um, yeah, you can hear me, but I can't actually see you. So let me just. I can start seeing comments now, but I can't actually see my video. Let me just shut down a couple of this stuff. I'm gonna wrap up. What I'll do on Friday instead. Uh, I need to find out what happened about the previous stream, whether I got a strike on my channel, and what actually caused that strike. What I'll do is. Uh, 
Uh, I will do I will do a show about the statues, uh, and on top of that about comedy and to find out. So, like I said, another solution, like in America, would be to um, the statues that are very controversial past, like you know people that are full on, uh, let's say. Um, individuals that like condoned and not only condoned slavery but had slaves fought against the abolishment of slavery maybe those people you could take the statues and put it into a, a museum rather than having them outside liberate because i'm going to be honest if i was an african person in america an african-american and i was walking about and there was a statue of a guy that enslaved my people and he's being uh, venerated as some kind of hero. I'd be pissed. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I would be pissed. I'm not saying I'll take the statues down, but I would be pissed. I'll be very angry. I'd be like, dude, like, who is this guy to be venerated like that? So I think, um, I think, um, not. No, I'm not saying racist because a lot of people in the past had very bad views. I mean, you can look at someone like Abraham Lincoln. You could say, oh, Abraham Lincoln was a great guy. He abolished slavery, but he was a racist. Abraham Lincoln was not a right. He was a racist as well. But uh, whether you like it or not, he was a racist, but he tried to live, stop slavery as well. Yeah, It doesn't stop the fact that he was still a racist. So there's a limit. I think certain people you have up, uh, if their history is just so black and white bad, maybe those people need to be taken up if you've got a history which is kind of like uh you know you're mixed yeah yeah like robert e lee and stuff like that yeah i mean obviously so if you have a people that are mixed so you know that done a lot of good but also have done bad if it balances up then keep the statues up but have both of their um both uh, a sides of their story so you have their uh oh blah blah's back and that rg me and blah blah argued every day don't worry, we're cool now. I'm going to do a show about uh, um, tattoos anyway. You did have a valid point, but I was a little bit pissed that day. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why. I was just like a little bit agitated. It's got, you know you know what I'm like. So, um, yeah, I think it needs to balance up. So, example is Churchill. Churchill uh, saved the West from Nazi Germany, but he, he, he caused a family in India, and he'd done a lot of other stuff and was a racist. So, I think it balances up, yeah. I think still have the statues up. I have a more kind of like a, a, a pluck with a more descriptive, uh, balanced view of the person, the good and the bad. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can talk about Mandela. So to some people, Mandela was a terrorist, but he he, he liberated, um, you know, the back people from oppression. One person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. So there are certain people that are just bad, like Osama bin Laden. ISIS, all of these kind of groups, yeah, these type of people, Hitler, all of these type of people are just black and white bad. You know, ninety-nine percent of the stuff that they were doing was just evil. Yeah, they had no real kind of redeeming features to them. So, yeah, I got hay fever. Of course, I have. Yeah, look at the size of my nose. How do you think that's going to get away from hay fever? It's the first thing to get it. Anyway, uh, let me just read a couple of comments. Then I'm going to go. Uh, like I said, I was going to do a bigger show, a longer show, but unfortunately, uh, my previous show got a uh, had to be closed, and I don't want to risk doing anything too controversial now, so I'll wait until Friday. Uh, I'll wait till I get that little fogger. Wait till I get Fogger fast. Wait till I get you, Fogger. Wait till I get you. I don't care, like, the end of the day, yeah, whether um, anyone says nothing or not. You're a disgraceful individual, yeah. You will sell anything out, yeah, uh, for whatever. You sold yourself off to Amraz because you're scared of him. You couldn't even stand up to um, uh, Amraz. He was calling your national hero a traitor. Instead, you was, oh, yes. As if he goes with the kafars, doesn't matter if a Muslim kills another Muslim. If he sides with the kafar, he's a traitor. What stupid logic is that? What stupid logic is that? That's just like the worst type of logic. Anyway, I'm going to um, go. And uh, like I said, previous thingy. Uh, what can I say? Yeah.
Protect the Mandela statue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, I'm not getting involved in this Tommy Rob because I'm not part of the movement anymore. I'm being straight with you. I'm, I'm a neutral person. Oh, let's just say I'm, I'm not neutral. I'm um, an independent. I want to be able to think for myself. I'm not part of no movement apart from the Raj movement. That's it. My own, my own kind of mind and what I want to do. Uh, Shine bleak. Raj, you mentioned me in your live streaming. Can you actually let me know what I said was wrong as you mentioned me? So it would be nice to know. I get a reply from you. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> that's, that's hard. I'm sorry, dude. I don't even. I don't remember. You're just one of the the one of thousands of comments I get, and sometimes I'm, I might see it and I might just start writing about it. Don't don't think I I don't remember what the comment is. So. Uh, Bloody, oh, no wonder my freaking computer was going slow. The bloody computer's running a scan in the background. Okay. Anyway, big up to everybody. I'll do a show on Friday going over the statues and the comedy stuff. Uh, and I'll do a proper show on that so we can talk about it properly. Anyway, big up to everybody, man. Take care.